Howdy folks, here we are, episode 15 it's going to be, but the first episode of the new series. This is uh, Kiwis and Malbs. Whoop, whoop. I've got my guest here, Brogan Kearson. What's up? Flatmate, producer, dude, dude, I'll let you do the talking. Give me a wee cheers for us, eh? G'day, mate. No worries. Thanks uh, for having me, man. Good to be here. It's been a while. I've been getting pretty uh, starving for these podcasts going again, eh? It's been fucking long, drawn-out time doing all the admin and setting all that shit up, but back into the field work. I love it. Love it. Yes. Right. Who are you? Who am I? My name's Brogan Kerrison. Um, I am a music producer. Um, I go under the alias of Glinko. Um, and, yeah, we we met at uni. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you decided you wanted to move over, had a spare room, and then everything kind of happened from there. Howdy do, howdy do de do. And this is? This is Chief. This is my little boy. Little boy Chief, eh? Mm. So he kind of just waltz around the house. What do you reckon about having like a, you pretty much have a dog now. Yeah. This, this is the first dog you've ever had. I know, I know it's your girlfriend's, but. Yeah. You know, what's it like? I well, me personally, I'm a dog person, mm. so I love dogs. But I never wanted to get a dog purely for the fact I didn't know if I could look after a dog well enough. Hard, I'm, yeah. I mean, like obviously with uni, probably wasn't ideal. Yeah, and then, those flatting environments, you don't want to be yeah, fucking exactly. around with dogs. In there. It can't <laughs> be too healthy. Um, but no, it's good now. It's 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 actually less responsibility than I thought it was going to be. Like. Right. I thought, I mean, he he particularly is a baby. Like, you've seen him. Yeah, he's a fucking princess. He's, he's a pussy. But he actually isn't as bad to look after. Like, they don't actually need, they just, mm. as long as you fill up their water, you feed them, you give them a heat yeah, attention. Yeah, hard. It's I reckon they want it, like, a lot of shit, but they actually don't need a lot of shit. Yeah, like, to actually, I mean, we he's pretty spoiled in himself, but yeah. you don't have to spoil them, I don't think. Like. They kind the of main thing they want is attention. Exactly. You know? Time. They just fucking want a bit of fucking petting. I mean, that's why he just always goes nuts whenever you guys come home. Yeah. I think, I also am like, maybe he has anxiety issues. Mm. Cause yeah, like, what do you think about dogs and anxiety? Because my mum thinks the same about our dog back home. I, I actually, before Emma used to say it, she was like, Emma's my girlfriend. Emma is Chief's mum. And that's how I met Chief. Mm. Um, but, uh, he, I think he's just alone too much. Yeah. Like, I think he, he's, he, li- he likes people to a point, but strangers, he's not that keen on. No, like, not at, at all. all. No one up in his personal shit. No. But most dogs are like that. Yeah. Really? Oh, true. then again, he's some are just super though. social way. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. It's pretty cool seeing like the differences in dogs. Yeah. And I, I wonder if like size makes a difference. Because mm. I mean, all the all the big dogs that I've ever met have always been real placid, but he is a psycho. Yeah, you think he's got small man syndrome? Probably. Probably, yeah. Probably get it from me. <laughs> <laughs> Crack up. Yeah. Um. Anyway, music production. How long have you been doing that shit for? Um. Probably, like actually producing music. We've Calling done. yourself a music producer. How long have you done that? When would you consider? When did it start? How did it start? Why did it start? All the jazz. Give me the deets. It was because uh, I started it as a DJ. Mm. It's a DJ, like starters bar, just a few different bars in Dunedin and things. Hard. And that was like an easy way to kind of, like, obviously, Make I had transition. Student, yeah, had, I had student loan and stuff. So it was a good way like to get yourself through uni, a bit more cash and things yep. like that. Um, but I just got to the point like, I wanted to, I got sick of playing other people's songs. Yeah. When I, I was like, if I'm uh, making my own songs, why am I not playing my own songs? Or at least making them, like, available. So then I was like, I'll give it a go on producing. Mm. Um, and then I actually started with, like, engineering, sound engineering. I reckon that's the easiest way in. Yeah. Because then you learn how to record. You learn, like, what an actual door is. Yeah, like which door like Ableton, Fruity Loops, or whatever you the use. D A D A W. D A W. Yeah. yeah. Digital audio workstation. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Um, and that it just 
made it easier to transition into from like DJ to recording to actually making producing producing yeah producing music yeah. um, for the DJing though um, since that was your starting point how how did you how did you start on that how how would you recommend getting started on that if someone wanted to do that shit because I think it's pretty cool and it's for certain types of people not for myself yeah I'm I bro I honestly think the biggest step to DJing is just actually buying the gear. Mm. Like once you buy the stuff, you can it does if once you have it, you can spend fifty hours on it. You can spend a hundred hours on it. You might learn it in two hours, you know. Hard. But the lo- the longer you spend on it, but it, it is especially at uni, mm. like controls and stuff for a decent something decent. It's like six eight hundred bucks. Yeah, it's a bit of coin, eh? Yeah, it's a I bit mean, of fucking coin to lay exactly. down. Exactly. Uh, you can get like virtual DJ. That's free. Yeah, hard. That's it's like a virtual turntable on your computer, eh? Yeah, and you just basically drag a song in. Yeah, I've had a little play around on that. It's pretty fun. Yeah, no, so I started there. Then in my last year of uni, like two years ago, three years ago, three years ago, I was kind of like, wanted to take it a bit more seriously. Yeah. Um. So I do just uni in the day. And then from like 11 to about two, and, and obviously we get up. Pretty late at uni, hard twelve o'clock. So I just work through the night, and then kind of just learn on YouTube. Yeah, just while we're like everyone else is sleeping and things. More so, I didn't hear people making abs- like people didn't hear me making shit mm. like until it started actually sounding okay. Yeah, I was just kind of trying to do it by myself. Yeah, hard. Oh yeah, and what is it about music production that why do you do it? What's the why? I think... What do you like about it? It's, for me, it was the best way to translate all music abilities. Mm -hmm. So, for example, my dad's a drummer. He's a jazz drummer. Yeah. He doesn't know how to play anything else. He can play a little bit on guitar. He can strum, but that's pretty much it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was kind of like, I wanted to be able to learn drums, then guitar, then, you know, keys and things like that, Mm -hmm. and be able to do them all in one. So I could record my keys, then I could record the drums, then I could record the bass or whatever individually. I still played them all, and it's all my song. Instead of when you're in a band, you only play one. Yeah, play your role. Yeah. Yeah, you play your role. And it's, yeah, I just found it. Control freak. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if I'm honest. It's more, yeah, so I don't have anyone else to ask. If I'm creating a song, it's just what I want. To answer to. When there's, yeah. yeah, when there's four or five people in a band, everyone else. Compromises, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, which is good. I think there's a good and a bad side to that. Yeah. Like, I get myself sure, a pros massive. Sure, and cons to each. Exactly. I get my, myself a mess of tangles. Mm. And you still indulge in that as well. You still you still do group writing. We do group writing oh, all the yeah, time. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. Like every Tuesday, yeah. we meet up. We um have writing sessions and stuff. But it's I just found it easier, so I could have my space for my ideas. Yeah. And then if I have any other projects, I can. I feel that, man. I feel that. that. It feels like a pure outlet of your individual creativity. Yeah. It feels more, more you. It's like, that's what I did. Yeah, yeah. 100%. I did that work. It's and the same as like, yeah. if you clean up, a, if you work on a garden and you do all the work and you make it look really nice, you're like, I fucking made that garden. But if you were having help from people, it's like, we made that garden, which is fine. And it's awesome. And it's easier. Yeah. And it's probably, you'd normally try to use even your own strengths, right? From the group. Exactly. But at the same time, you want to see what you can do by yourself. Exactly. Like that's, everything that I put out is just a self image of me. Yeah. So I'm kind of like, hard, you know, n- n- there are always other influences, but it in itself is me. And the know? only obstacle is yourself. Exactly. You know, you've only got to like negotiate with yourself. When are you going to do this shit? How yeah. much effort are you going to put into this shit? How long are you going to try to do it? All that shit. It's just you. Yeah. You get to make your own choices. Individuality. It, it, it just, you know, if, if the song isn't made, I, if, I, if I say a song's going to be made in two months, and it's not made in two months. The only person I can be like, it's like broken. You fucked up. Yeah, you it's, you're you the blame. Two months. It's been three. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's also a bit of that. But yeah, definitely control. <laughs> Hard. That's a, that's a 
So Main, um, main, main stuff. music production. So you did you did uni? We met in uni in Dunedin, right? Yeah. Yeah. From Christchurch. We won't we, we won't dig into that too much. It's a shithole. <laughs> Nah, I, someone good. said to me the other day, they're like, oh, are you from Christchurch? I was like, yeah, 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 from New Zealand. He's like, oh, New Zealand's not, uh, Christchurch's not really part of New Zealand. No one really counts it as New Zealand. I was like, what? Why? <laughs> He's like, because there's nothing there. I'm like, oh. There's earthquakes. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I reckon Christchurch will be sick in a couple of years' time. Yeah. Um, it already Anyway, is. finished uni, and then you came here to Big Bad Melbourne. Big now, this Bad. is kind of the theme of the podcast, Kiwis in Melbourne. True. What's your thoughts? What do you think of Melbourne? How long have you been here? Uh, two years coming up in January. So I got here January, what are we, 2008, 2017. Yeah. Mm. So it'll be, yeah, next year, start of next year. So a year and nine months-ish at the moment. Yeah. It's honestly, I mean, I've only ever lived in, for a long period of time, Christchurch in Dunedin. Yeah. I've been, I stayed in Auckland for like a month. Month and a half doesn't two. count, eh? Yeah, but it's not really. It's not you, you're not living in the city. Nah. You but get a feel for how things are moving a little bit, but yeah. you don't. You you're haven't not indulged in the culture. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I feel like you need three months for that shit. Yeah, and even Personally. longer just to kind of yeah. get settled. The more, the merrier. But um, Melbourne in itself is epic. It, yeah. It's hard to explain because you ask any anyone about Melbourne, they're usually like, "Oh, I love Melbourne. Melbourne's an awesome place." They're like, why? They're like, oh, it's just cool. Mm. Yeah, it's cool, but like, what makes it cool? But now being here, I'm kind of like, I would give that same answer. It's just cool. Yeah, it's yeah. Just, like, if you want to go and eat out at three in the morning, you'll still have at least 10 choices. Huh. Like, it's, it's, it doesn't really matter where you are. You'll be able to do whatever or something that you want to. I think that's the coolest part. And the other thing I find in Melbourne, people in general, I feel like I, I, this is how I felt in Christchurch. I felt that if I was to say I want to be a music producer, people would be like, one, what is that? Two, get a real job. Yeah. Whereas over here, nine out of ten people, they do their job and they have like, I want to be a dancer or I want to be an actor or they're actually working to something or their passion that they really want to achieve. Mm -hmm. That's what I. That's why I like being in Melbourne. You're surrounded by people. More optimism, maybe then for the future. <sighs> like, I think people. Yeah, optimism. They just dream bigger. They're willing. Yeah, they're willing to chase their dream a bit more. But in saying that, I think that just goes hand in hand with a city. Yeah, like true. The city is a place where there are more opportunities because size. there's more people. Fucking yeah. size in New Zealand in this place. Yeah. Hey Google, what's the population of Melbourne? Melbourne population, 3.848 million, 2011, and 4.169 million, 2011. There you go. We'll take that, about 4 mil. Shout out Google. Yeah, we've got a Google Home system at the What's moment. What's that compared to... Hey, Google. Hey, Google. No, answers me. He hates his voice. Hey, Google. What's the population of New Zealand? The population of New Zealand was 4.693 million in 2016. Sweet, yeah. So, so it's, it's the pretty pop, similar, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah like it's, it's all crammed into this one little city, and that's fucking cool. That's that's. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I suppose you're right. It is. It's more. I think people here in New Zealand, there's only a small part of us. There's mm. what well, compared to everywhere else, there's a tiny part of us. So maybe there's something inside of us that say, I don't want to fail too much because we pretty much know everyone, or there's some sort of connection. Yeah, because that's what I. That's what I felt like. When I was in New Zealand, everyone was really scared to fail. That's recording, eh? Sweet. Just double checking. Yeah. New software, I wasn't sure. New door. Sorry. Ah, new I was door. just confused. confused. Sorry. Carry on. When you're in New Zealand? Yeah, it just felt like failure was something that people focused on a lot. Mm, they Mate, more ran away everyone. from failure rather than yeah, running yeah. towards success. Yeah, like. Two different things, yeah. Yeah, I. To me, that's that's basically the why I like Melbourne. It feels like feels like there's a lot of creatives around too. Yeah, yeah, there is a lot. It's a very open city, and uh, the party life's awesome. Maybe alcohol, alcohol is pretty expensive though. 
That's the only thing. Incredibly. Except for wine. Wine's fucking mean. <laughs> Your wine? That tastes like shit. Well, I buy goon. Nine bucks. 40 standards. Get that in you, kids. Get that in you. That's, that's <laughs> ridiculous, man. Yeah. What's that a standard? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'll give up on that one already. Hey, Google, what's nine, what? what's nine divided by 40? Is that the right the answer is 0 0.225. No, nah, that wasn't the right equation. Is it 40 divided by 9? I don't know. I'm not going to worry about it. Either way. A lot of alcohol. Drinks. That's ridiculous. A lot of alcohol. Um, beer, though. Wow. What's the go there? I don't get it. I was reading up on why wine's so cheap. Apparently, it's because there's a surplus. And so they're just undercutting the market. This is like, it's like outlet stores. Uh. It's like an outlet store for wine. Everywhere. I didn't realize it was, but I haven't seen a, oh, I suppose vineyards and stuff are like ages away from. That's the other thing about Melbourne. It's like in New Zealand, you, you're either from Christchurch or you're Auckland or where, whereas here, like we talked about that one time, you're either from Brunswick or like the other side of the city, which yeah. is an hour and a half away. Yeah. Totally. Which is still the same city. Yeah. It's a suburb game. Hey, yeah. like what suburb are you from? A suburb is a separate city. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or a separate town, however you want to conceptualize it. It's how you group yourself. I'm a <laughs> Northcote kid. Yeah. Uh, what about rent? Rent seems about about the same as like Wellington slash Auckland, though I haven't lived in either of those places, and they are really expensive. But if you want to live in the city here, you have any idea what we're talking? Uh, I was looking at... These this place oh foot in Footscray, which is would you count that as city? Nah. Uh, so even closer. I'm talking like CBD. Oh, like apartment thing. Yeah. Fuck, it's so big. We yeah, I mean, I'm guessing like two twenty upwards, and like that's just rent a week. Oh, at least yeah. I'd say at least two twenty. Nah, yeah, just expensive. But then again. In Melbourne, like we were saying before, so many people. Mm. I I didn't realize like how many people like the 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 wage here is ridiculous. Yeah, so look, the wages here are fucking so, stupid. Like, what the hell? There's so it's so much money. I don't know whether I should be saying, but like, so I'm just doing like part time work in in a warehouse at the moment. Hardly. It's like, it's like, yeah. You're pretty much working full time. Yeah, yeah, but if it if it was, if I was doing that in New Zealand, you'd probably get like 18 bucks an hour. Yeah, totally. It's like st I started on 32. Yeah. Yeah, you're pretty much getting, you get double that. That's easy. I, and like the work. And living costs aren't. It isn't no. that much higher either. It's I don't even <laughs> think it's higher. I think it's pretty equal really when yeah. you even it out. But that's that's what everyone said to me. They're like, when you move over there, it's gonna be so expensive. Yeah, food's so expensive. Your rent's gonna be so expensive. I live cheaper here mm. than I did in New Zealand. Hard, hard. Like, just taking into account earning and mm. like outgoings, you know, rent and things yeah, like net. that. Yeah, <laughs> your net income. Oh yeah, no, the wages are hectic here. I don't know how, I don't know how people afford that shit. Do you think it's because we're in a city, these businesses are blossoming more, so they have more income coming in, but they have more staff, but then they're just like, oh, fuck, we, we can afford to pay you? Or what's the minimum wage here? Hey, Google, what's the minimum wage in Melbourne? Here is some information from the web that might possibly help. On the website fairwork.gov.au, they say, the national minimum wage is currently $18.93 per hour or $719.20 per 38-hour week. So a full week, you the, the lowest you can earn is $718, bucks, 20 bucks, $720. If you're employed full-time, was that? Yeah. Yeah. So $18.93, was it, I think? Yeah. $18.93. Like that. That's pretty high. I don't know what it is in New Zealand. It's creeping up, though. It's like up around mid-teens. Mid teens, it was. I mean, when I was there, it was like fifteen fifty. Mm, yeah, two years ago. Yeah, oh, year and a half ago. Yeah, I don't know. It's. it's I I, pretty I crazy. reckon it just comes down to sheer size. It has to. Must be a these massive. Bu factor. These businesses are massive. 
Yeah. Yeah. Like bigger bigger than a scale than we probably realize because we're from so we're somewhere so small. We're like just a scale we didn't even weren't even aware it went so far. I remember going to Auckland being like, holy shit, this place is massive. Look at the sky tower. And now like you look at that city and it's like, oh Yeah. It's hard. It's not that impressive anymore. Yeah, no, it's pretty I don't know why the wages are so big. Anyway. What else about Melbourne? What is it? Mm, what else? Weather. Weather. I'd say weather mm. reminds me a lot closer to Christchurch. Like yes, it, it we had a forty a forty degree day last summer. Mm. It literally felt like if you walk outside, like you know when you get into your car after in like a real hot day. Yeah. You open your car, you sit in there, it's boiling hot. It's literally like that outside. Right. Yeah, but that's, that's, I haven't I haven't done the summer here yet. Oh yeah, I've yeah, only yeah, been yeah. here six you months. Ex- Experience that yet? But winter's like I feel like it's pretty close to to New Zealand. Yeah, yeah. hell yeah! It really caught me off guard the winter. Yeah, I know. Eh? Me too. Because <laughs> everyone's just got that preconception. Oh, Australia! Yeah, hot. it's gonna be hot. Mm. Well, that's what I thought. I was like, yeah, let's move to Australia. It's gonna be hot. Yeah. Nah. Nah. Nah, gee. <laughs> pretty really, cold, yeah. eh? Well, like we have that fucking heater on. But then all that, the time. That makes me feel like. Yeah, I don't care. I don't mind the cold. Yeah, I reckon it makes the hot better. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> and it just kind of reminds me of home. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Just I'm like, oh, a bit yeah. more comfortable. Yeah, 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 just a little bit. Whether right. it matters. Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Um. But yeah, so we've been living in this flat here, and we're in a place called Maidstone. Which is about what thirty minutes from the city, you'd say roughly. Yeah. Thirty minutes on public transport to the city. Yeah, about that. About that. But yeah, it's just been us two pretty much. We um, but your missus is moving in. Yeah. Missus is moving in, eh? Taking the step. How do you think it's gonna go with the the third wheel as well? <laughs> the third wheel. Third wheel's always been there. Yeah, I'm pretty good at being a third wheel man. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, yeah, this is true. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. What do you say? Yeah, you sit right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I think I think it's good for us because it gives us. It's not just us in the house. Yeah. Then it could the only only person we could talk to is each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas me and you, we we I'll come home from work, say hello, blah blah blah, do a thing. We might do our own thing for a little bit. But then towards the end of the night, yeah. we'll be hanging out, chilling, like maybe watching a movie or playing PlayStation or yeah, something yeah, like yeah. that. So it's good to kind of, I suppose, split up the time. Have the moderation. Emma does her own thing as yeah. well. Yeah. It works. Yeah. It works Big well. decision still though, eh? Um, just on that front... Big decisions in general, because it must have been a pretty big decision for you to make a move over here as well. Right? Well, if I'm honest, I didn't even know I was going to move here. Mm. And then, like, did you just come here to visit, and then you stayed, or? Well, I went up. I was actually moving up to Auckland. I went. I went and lived. That's when I was with my brother for two months. A month? No, yeah, a month. About yeah. three weeks. And I did like a little tour around New Zealand and stuff. And then standard. Like, and then I was like, uh, well, you know, I'm just gonna try to find a flat, things like that. And then, um, and then my brother was like, why, why would you bother moving to here? Yeah. And I was like, well, you know. Auckland, it's the big smoke. The big old smoke. It's smoker. the big smoke. Like, where else am I going to go? And he's <laughs> like, why, why, why wouldn't you move to somewhere like Sydney or, you know, Melbourne, Amsterdam? I was like, ages away. Mum's not going to let me do that. But then he was kind of just like, for opportunity okay, I noted that you like this. Cheers. <laughs> I, 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 I'm totally lost where I was. I move over to Amsterdam. Oh yeah, because he was just like, what, "What's the difference between moving to Auckland or moving over there?" Because like, I'm ages away. Mm. He was like, "Well, yeah, but think about opportunity wise. You know, obviously, your your mum's never going to want you to move. Whether you're fifty, whether you're five, she's yeah. never got. She never wants to lose her baby. Hard. So I was kind of like, "Oh yeah, fair enough." And then I kind of looked at prices. Yeah, stuff for flats and that was pretty much exactly the same. Yeah. So I was kind of like, uh, try it. YOLO. <laughs> yeah. He was like, try it for three months. Yeah. See if you like it. And then three months went by. Daunting? Making making the move, you know, when you step foot on that plane, you're like, it's happening. 
Yeah. That man. Well, I, I kind of had like an insurance policy. I was like, nah, I'm coming back in three months, so it won't matter. Although I think inside I knew I was never going to come back. Yeah. But in my head, to make it seem not so daunting, make so it, I could yeah. take that step, I was yep. like, I'll be back. It like, doesn't matter. Just, just yeah, yeah. Yep. And then once I was here, I was kind of like slowly settled in and then, yeah, it just kind of took, took over itself. Hard. But yeah, I think, I think again, the biggest, the biggest step is just making the first step. Like just actually saying to yourself, yeah, I'll move overseas. When it's not, when you think like overseas is a big word, like a big deal. Yeah. Australia is not really. It's not. It's just an extension New Zealand. Yeah. Exactly. Honestly, you, I never felt away from home here. Yeah. Hey. It just feels like I'm in, in New Zealand still. That could be because well, yeah, you're living home. with me, like, totally. Com- All my friends are fucking Kiwis, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, like our mates and stuff. So I suppose that probably has a, uh, has a part. Plays a hand in it, for yeah, sure. Definitely. Yeah. So that's, that's a good thing, I think. Yeah, well, when you're confronting big decisions then, because pe- people will class it as a big de- decision. I yeah. class it as a big decision. Now Same that I as look like, back, I, I class it as a big decision. Yeah, for sure. Same yeah. as your girlfriend moving in, like. So confronting big decisions, do you have any, like, tactics to try and analyze them and move your way through them to get to a conclusion? What's your thought process when you're uh, confronting a big decision? Because hmm. I think everyone who goes to uni has to struggle with this as well. Once they get to the end of their degree, it's like, well, for me, uh, I was kind of like, oh, shit, you know, like, playtime's over. Yeah. Uni was kind of playtime for yeah, me. Yeah, definitely. And like, then it's like, shit, I fuck. What am I actually, what do I want to do? Yeah. What am I going to do? Where am I going to go? And what am I going to do if shit hits the fan? You know? Asking the big questions. Yeah, I know, man. <laughs> well, how do you navigate way through that? I think you kind of talked about it just saying, like, the biggest step is the first step. I think you've got to just kind of throw yourself in the deep end a little yeah. bit. Yeah. And just take some risks. But do I, you have I, any thoughts on it? I think it comes back to what I was saying before, like, I just, in my head, I try to dumb everything down mm. and just basically act naive on it. You right. know, like, oh, yeah, I'll just take it to its easiest point. Like, if I'm going to move over, to, if I'm going to start a business and be like, ah, you know, it's not that hard. You get an ABN or, you know, a tax file number or, yeah. you know. Um, Will that still go when it's like that? Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. And then, you know, if you start making, you start making money and that's it. Like, when do you call it a business? Mm. So I, that's what I, that's what I, that's kind of how I, I do things. I, I just do it. And if, and I try to tell myself it do, if it doesn't work, I don't care. Yeah. Whereas and I do, but like. Your approach is kind of do it and learn on the go a little bit. Pretty much. Yeah. Like, I'm not, I'm not scared of failure because I, I feel like if you don't fail, you probably never going to get somewhere good. You know, like... It seems to be the general consensus from everyone successful. Exactly, yeah. And like, another word for failure is just learning. Yeah, you know? exactly, yeah. That's literally what it is. It's a better way to conceive it, eh? Yeah, it's... So I... I if I want to do it, I kind of just do it. And if it fails, then probably wasn't meant to do it. Yeah. That's kind of how I, I tried... I tried to simplify everything. Otherwise, it gets really... Things get really daunting. Mm. You know, like, just... Just everything, e- even with music. Yeah. Like when you start thinking, oh, I really want five million hits on a song. Then it's like, how am I going to get those hits? What do I have to do? How much money do I have to spend? Who do I have to talk to? Like yeah. everything gets way more daunting. If you just make the song, release it, and if it makes it to five million, it's like, cool. You know? Yeah. I think that's kind of, instead of being like, oh, I need to get there. This is how I do it. If you just take this first step, then you you're you're on the you're on the way to getting there anyway. I think to a to an extent, I wouldn't use the analogy of the song just because I know how hard it is to like make a hit and everything mm. like the marketing shit that goes behind it. You probably the chances of you just releasing a song, you getting five million hits on it. Very, very, low. very, very unlikely. But it's it just <laughs> makes it easier to comprehend, I think. Like Yeah, it, it's still it's a good it's still um a good psychological tool to use mm. to use a comparison like that. I don't know if it's smart though, because I've thought about that. And I'm like, I could dumb everything down and just just so I'm not so scared to take the first move. But what happens when I jump into something that I can't get out of? Mm. You're all stuck in quicksand. Yeah, yeah. Like, like it's all good taking the right step, but it's got to be, you know, there's got to be some countermeasures there somewhere. I suppose it's more about voluntarily jumping into the into the water. 
you know, True. instead of like being pushed into the water and like taking that first step by being pushed, you have to voluntarily be like and acknowledge this could potentially fuck out by the way. Mm. Fuck it. I'll try it. Try it. Yeah. At the end of the day, most things most things turn out all right. You know? It, I, it seems like things could always be worse yeah. than what they get. It, I, I think that comes down to the person you are. Like, it, if you see things going wrong, you're going to try and make sure it doesn't. Like, yeah. So you'll just mediate anything that comes along. Yeah. Hard. So I, I, I suppose it's more just a tool to take the first step and if something starts going wrong, then you know, like, then you got to try to fix that problem. Yeah. 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 Well, if you can it as, as though you're trying to get from A to B, like you want to, you're somewhere and you want to get to somewhere else. Of course, there's going to be fucking hurdles in the way. Yeah. Like, no one's just going to let you walk there, <laughs> yeah, walk yeah. up to your dream. Just that though. Makes things so much easier. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's things that make it easier, right? You know? Yeah. Money makes it easier. Yeah. That's. But at what cost? You know, you sacrifice something by having money because time. Money, well, you sacrifice time because you have to earn it. But even if you just already have the money, you know, money's powerful. You know, powerful, it's pretty man. hard to overpower greed. It's a fucking strong, strong, strong emotion. My question is though, right? Say, 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 for example, say if I had, if I was a millionaire already, would that still matter to say I want to, I, I want to make a hit song? Because I'm a millionaire, does that mean that I can make a hit, like a hit song? Does that mean you've got a better pathway towards getting that hit song? I think, I think so. I, I think definitely towards a pathway, but. I think the heart, the, those trials and tribulations, like those hurdles you're talking about, that's what makes, that's the slow pieces that will make the hit. If you well, know that's what I mean. What I'll that's what we're just saying, right? Yeah. Like the failure, the failure is just exactly. learning. So if you don't, if you don't run into any hurdles, then you're not learning anything. Yeah. That's why I'm like, I, 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 obviously it's pretty obvious that if you had a heap of money, PR team, a writing team, boom, good people behind you. But then it, that goes back to what we were saying before that's the point of glencoe for me mm. like because that's just me you know like yeah, it's yeah. just my image if i had money i have to employ people or, or use Outsource. external yeah external sources to get to where i want so i still don't think like for me it wouldn't cut the craving of wanting my own thing if you know what i mean even if i had money autonomy outweighs the exactly yeah 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 the success, the success. i'd like i probably wouldn't count it as success because right. it's not what i wanted to do you know mm -hmm. but in saying that and that's fine I, like, to, I think everyone should be allowed to define their own terms of success and yeah. be able to define whether they did it the right way or not even yeah. if they get to the destination they might be like oh yeah but i cheated yeah, I cut yeah. that corner yeah <laughs> Be honest with yourself. Yeah, well, you've got to be honest with yourself for sure. Mm. Um, with Glencoe, what is the go? What's the go? So you've released how many songs with him now? Uh, one, two, four. Four. What are the names? Four. Sugar, Brother. Is uh, This Home? Is This Home. Latest one. And All in My Head. All in My Head. And you've got another one in the works soon. Or yeah. Is that on the download? Yeah. Nah, it's coming. <laughs> um, the next one, I'm thinking next month. Next month, you're thinking to release month. another one? Yeah, what are we, September today? But make sure you go check out his tunes as well. Uh, really cool. I like it. It's good. And He has to say that too. Hey? He has to say that. Whatever. <laughs> no, I do like it. I don't actually normally like the type of music that you produce, but I like, I like the stuff that you're producing. It's good. I think you're adding Thanks. a... I don't know. I don't know why I like it. Maybe it's because I know you. Maybe I'm yeah, just biased because that. I know you, and I'm like, oh, yo, that's my mate. That's I cool. reckon there will be a part of that. Yeah, I think there'll be a part of it. I think I also like it. I like your melody lines. They're, I like your, like, you have a, like, kind of basic template that you work off, it seems, and, like, you just utilize it to the best without making it too complex and, like, keeping to a certain set of maybe social musical rules or some bullshit, you know? Yeah. I think with Glencoe, for me, it's more about, one, it was just the uh, the easiest way for me to learn, mm -hmm. like learn how to actually start making music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and also another way to learn because obviously there's music, then there's music business. 
Yeah, yeah. You know, and that's what you're getting into now. Yeah. They're two totally, just because you know one doesn't mean you're going to know the other. Hell yeah. So I was kind of like, with Glinko, it just means it's like a professional face that I can go through professional contract signings, yeah. like learn how to negotiate, learn how to work with other artists, um, not just like obviously musical wise, but then negotiate with other artists, you know, what, what, what I want, what they You're want. You're good at that shit though, man. I, I, I think it, it's probably more because I, I know what I want. Mm. And I, but I find that it's the same with a lot of like artists that I work with. They're quite, you, they, they know what they want and you know what you want. So sometimes you might clash, you know, and it's, I think it's just confident people. Maybe I'm not really sure on that. Cause I'm kind of like extroversion, agreeableness, yeah. like that definitely weighs into the negotiation practice. I would say. Yeah. I'd and probably even conscientiousness a little bit. Like, if you're more orderly, you're going to want it a certain way even more. Yeah, you know? yeah, exactly. That's and you're not going to be as open to change. And openness, because <laughs> you could be as open to change with everything. Yeah. Personality, temperament, massive. You've got to be able to navigate your way through different temperaments. Yeah. Right? See, I didn't even know that. That's like, if, if I'm going through a, a negotiation... I'm not thinking to myself, what's my temperament right now? Because mm. that's causing what I'm saying next, you know. I just, I suppose it just, you just kind of do it. Consciously. And if I'm honest, like, I'd say a lot of it would have to do with my brother. Right. Um, and my dad. Oh, who's your brother? Oh, my brother, um, Jason Kerrison. He plays, played in a band um, called Op Shop. Mm. He was a lead singer. Right. So reasonably famous New Zealand band, really. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's most cool. people in New Zealand know Op Shop, I would say. Growing now, up with us, now though, I don't know now. I don't yeah. know about the kids now. Most people know Op Shop. Most people know Op Shop, and they have some bangers, bro. See, it's hard. It's hard for me to tell because because you've always known them. Yeah, you've seen the whole thing. I saw them before they became Op Shop. The people that came in and out yeah. before Op Shop, like how much of inspiration was that for you? I like to say I'm like ah. Oh. I'm not sure that it weighed apart, but mm. massive, probably. Like probably, yeah. My yeah. dad's my biggest influence. Yeah. Like, he's, if I'm ever doing something, I'm kind of like, because he was the one that would be like, yeah, son, I'll be honest with you. He was the one who told me, he's like, your singing's, I wouldn't be, if I was you, I don't think singing's the right way to do mm. it. And it was quite like hearing that, like I used to try singing to things like that, because I wanted to be like my brother. Yeah, yeah. And then when he was like, if I'm honest, your skills aren't in singing. I was like, ouch. Ouch. yeah, <laughs> but that's singing so vulnerable. As I know, I know, it? exactly. It's like, but then again, I'm glad because there's multiple times that that happened, which kind of forced me to where I'm going. Yeah, which if it had hadn't happened that way, I would have tried all these avenues, failed. Fa the learning like, curve. Yeah, exactly. Like learning curve without br brutal honesty, it hurts, but. Long term benefits are worth it. Exactly, know? yeah. But or I didn't know that. You don't know that as a kid. You just no think one your dad thinks no, you shit. You don't know that now. You know, like yeah, yeah. no one ever likes being told brutal, honest, brutally yeah. honest shit because they're like, "Fuck you!" Exactly, you just ruined my day. I'm shitty now. And then they'll go away for a week, a month, or six months, and they'll be like, <laughs> "Yeah, or forever." Like, <laughs> or you, forever. You could just Fuck yeah. Some away. people, yeah. yeah. But, but you can be too brutally honest. Yeah, there is a That's line. You got to be careful with it. It, and there's a way to use it as well. There's certain tactics that you can try to use yeah. to make sure that it's most effective. That'd be handy to know too. Like I reckon, I think could... making people try figure it out themselves rather than telling them to their yeah, face. Yeah, true. Yeah, I and think that works well. Not making it so obvious that they can be like, like, like we were saying, like sowing a seed. Yeah, you yeah. You plant yeah. a seed in someone's head, and it might grow, it might develop blossom, itself. It might just like play on their mind and tinker on them. And then yeah, but in terms of like inspiration and stuff, yeah. My dad, seeing my brother go through things, it. Just, I think more than anything, it probably instilled drive, mm. um, and belief. Yeah, like it's possible. Yeah, yeah, like it's I've possible. seen my dad do it. I've seen, you know, my brother do it. Hopefully, I could do it. Yeah. You know, like, but well, if I think not, you're on the right path, mate. Well, I hope so. But I think I th the album's a good place to do it as well. Yeah, I think. 
it, the people say either Sydney or Melbourne, like a good like a good place to go. Melbourne. To. Sydney's got their like lockdown. Yeah. Shit rules. I don't know. It doesn't seem to complain fun. about. I don't know anything about Sydney to be fair. Yeah. Actually, I suppose people from Sydney. Mm. It'll be good to hear what you guys do. Yeah. <laughs> Hit us up. We'll do a Kiwis in Sydney. Anyway, I think we should have a quick break. How about that? I think that could be a good point. Um, now, do you have a song that you could recommend for people to listen to? <sighs> Putting you on the spot here. Um, What's in your mind right the now? The first song that came to my head was 50 Ways to Leave Your Lover. By? Uh, Paul Simon. Paul Simon, 50 Ways to Leave Your Lover. Go check out the link. You know how it works, kids. We'll be back in a tick. Sure. And we're back. What a tune, mate. Hey. Cream in my ears. How about those drums? How about them drums, eh? Hey. Going to get those drums done one day, eh? Uh, we'll see. <laughs> yeah. are free. Okay. This is a new segment I'm introducing. It's called Curious Questions. Uh, it's an app on your phone. You can download it for free. I bought like an extra couple of packages to get some questions, but it's just basically like intellectually exploring random questions. Curious questions, right? Keep an element of curiosity in here, for sure. Okay, so the question this week is, can you be certain of anything? And you give us your answer first, eh? No. Well. I think you can be certain that you can't be certain of anything. Oh, my gosh. Did you get me? I don't reckon you can be certain of anything. Well, I, I kind of want to argue that because... Hit me. It, it, I can argue now. Any true, any anything. What's the question again? Can you be certain of anything? I think yes, because it's only ever up to you. Mm. In some some things, like if we're talking about the weather, you have no control on that. I think it comes down to control measures. If 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 you if we're talking about, can you be certain that you're going to be a music manager? Mm. I think you can. Because all you have to do for the rest of your life is try being a music manager. You can tell yourself that you will be. Yeah, like and just and just keep doing it until it happens. You might be fifty by the time it happens. Yeah, but it might happen. I wouldn't call that certainty though. I don't think that's what the definition of certainty is. <sighs> if I was certain about anything, it's like, can I be certain that I am going to shit after I eat food? <laughs> yep. <laughs> You know, like that choice, yeah. More like biological things. Can yeah. I be certain that, um, you know, same thing? I need to piss uh, one day. <laughs> yeah, I think, but that, that can I be certain that I'll die? Yes, yes. I would say. Well, then, yeah, I'm probably making a better claim for yes now. Can you be certain that, although you know how to play guitar, mm. that you'll learn, you'll know that you can learn to play a certain song? Could you learn to play? Paul Simon's 50 Ways to Leave Your Lover. I think that's a certainty. Although it's not, you, you don't know for sure. It's something, mm. it's... I wouldn't it, call that a certainty then if you don't know for sure. That's what a certainty is, you know? I, I see, I reckon that there probably comes down to confidence. Mm. See, for me, I'll keep doing it until I can. Mainly because I'm so competitive that I don't want... To be proven wrong. Yeah. So for me, in my head, I'll just do it until it is a certainty. Yeah. But then again, obviously, there are cert there are many, many things that I will say that I will do that I probably will never get done. Mm. Or I, that are not certainties at all. So your answer to that is, can you be certain of anything? No. You're going to go for no now? Well, I think yes. I think I think yes, depending on control measures. So anything? Can you be certain of anything at all? Weather? No. But can I be certain that I'm going to achieve what I I set I set out to be achieve, achieved? Yes, because I'll just do it until I can't. You know. Yeah, you're you're conceptualizing it way different to how I'm conceptualizing it. I, I'm I'm gonna say yes, just because of those very certainties. Like the biological certainties of we're gonna die. Yeah. We're gonna shit. We're gonna piss. Yeah. We're gonna um. 
I don't know. All those other shit. We're going to grow here. Oh, I suppose not everyone does. True. Yeah. I suppose there are only certain certainties then. I think the I think the best certainty is that you're gonna die. That you're born, that you die. Yeah. There's no certainty that you'll be born, but that's getting pretty. Realistic. Is it a certainty that you can be? You have to be born from a woman. It's a certainty, eh? Do you reckon mm, that'll always be a certainty? No, I don't reckon. I reckon no they'll suss that out. Eh? I reckon like they. I reckon they've probably already sussed that out. Yeah, they probably have eh? like, lab babies. Well, I, I mean, what's I mean, conception through test tube. Is that and then go? implantation? Oh, right. But it still needs to grow through the mother, right? Yeah, but still needs the actual mother. conception wise mm. didn't happen that way. But I'm meaning birth. Ah, uh, given birth. What about if one day we can like crack out of eggs? Dude. I wish I would get out how of happy, like that. How happy would my girlfriend be if I could give birth and she didn't have to? How happy would every, or well, would they? Maybe it would be more detrimental than anything. Maybe it's the. It's the sacrifice of like carrying the baby for nine months that really creates that bond, and yep. you've you've been one with this baby. Oh, you I fit it in like hugely, yeah. massive part to the bond, eh? But then again, like what what about um, uh, like postnatal? What is it? Where depression? Yeah, postnatal depression or trauma where they just don't want anything to do with the baby, yeah, at all. I mean, like, but what is the go with that? I don't know, I, I, but they've carried the uh, baby. It's not. For, it's not uh, it's an exception, though. True. It's not the norm. True. But they've still carried that baby for nine months. They've still created mm -hmm. all the same bonds that others, but for some reason they just didn't bond with their baby. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I suppose it just I suppose it just happens. So I guess that's not really a certainty do, do a lot of those people who have prenatal uh, depression or whatever, um, do, if they have another kid, will they suffer it again? I wonder if that correlates. If it's like an ongoing thing, like I just can't, I just not feeling kids, bro. You know, uh, you probably you'd probably struggle to try again if it happened to you once, eh? You'd be like, uh, there, there would be definitely some sort of trauma. But oh, yeah. would would the want? I mean, like, what about a miscarriage? Oh yeah, a miscarriage would be pretty crazy, eh? But, but people still want to try after that. Maybe even different. more. It's different. I feel like it's different. It got taken away from them. They didn't have an option in it. The prenatal yeah, depression's like yeah. you have the baby here. It's a kind of expecting you to be its mum, and then there, they're yeah. like, Ugh. Oh, I'm, I'm not trying. I'm not trying to make it like that, but yeah, you know, I don't know enough about it either. Me either. That's what I'm thinking. I don't know anyone who's had it. I'd love to talk to someone who's had it though. Well, what's the go? Let me know. Hit me up. Get on here. How scary that would be. Yep, it'd be scary. It'd be hell scary. But it's it's also funny about with birth that that becomes your birthday. And fuck, fuck, like, um, when you think about birthday, when I think about birthday, I don't think, oh, yeah, that's the day I, I was born. I, <laughs> I just down. think it's a day <laughs> where, when I'm a kid in particular, I was like, oh, that's a day. Oh. I get fucking heaps of presents yeah, and yeah, shit exactly. that day. It's a relation to that. It doesn't, I don't think like, oh, yep, today is when I entered this world. And here I am, and now I'm celebrating that. 25 years later, or 24, whatever, how many years later. Me, yeah. I, see, I personally... What do, you, what do you think about with birthdays? I'm bad with birthdays. Like, I was real keen on birthdays, you know, when, until you're like, I think it, maybe about 20, uh, 21. Mm-hmm. After 21, I like, I think it was my 23rd birthday. I had forgotten it was my birthday. And then my dad texted me, of all people. Oh, my mum texted me. And then was like, happy birthday, son. And then obviously my dad texted me after that. I was like, oh, that's right. It's my birthday. But it, was, it wasn't, I mean, I, th I think I knew it was. I think I was just doing something that day that I had totally forgot about. And then I was like, yeah. afterwards, I think I would have realized. But I just, it just, I don't really hold, it's another day on the calendar. I don't know. Oh, I don't yeah, know if that's no, a good, good or bad thing. I'm not big on them either. But that's interesting because the other night we were just talking about celebrations, yeah? Mm. And then you were just saying that, like, you were, like, taking the piss out of me for not doing graduation and then for not. But see, see, graduation for me, I, just, at, I mean, at, right at this moment, 
That's that's the best day I've ever had so far. Well, you could I mean, conceptualize graduation birth. as your birth into reality, into the real world. Yeah, th- I think that's why. And plus, because I hated uni. Mm. If I'm totally honest, I hated uni. I hated school. I did it anyway, but I didn't. Just I've never been a studier. I've never been a studier on someone something that I didn't really want to do. Yeah, it was. If I'm honest, now that I look back, we were talking about student loans the other day. Yeah. Uh, and I'm kind of like, if I could have my time again, I think I would still go to uni, but I wouldn't study what I did, uh, which was PE. Yeah. And if I, then again, I don't even know if I would go back to uni. I mean, yeah. I, I say the inclination, but it's either I wouldn't go or I'd study something different, but I'm kind of leaning towards I wouldn't go. Feel you. I just feel like the best thing I got out of uni was the socializing. Yeah. Which is shouldn't be underrated because it is fucking important, I reckon. Yeah. You learn how to talk to people, you learn how to social um, skills. Even live with people. Live with people. Yeah. Or you learn how to learn how to bit of individuality. Fend for yourself, home. like cook your own stuff, yeah. pay your own rent, like do the simple things. Like I had never started a bank account before I had to go to uni. Uh-huh. Like, all that's not that big of a deal. I I didn't. I I already had one, but I never started it. I don't know how I got there. Ooh. Must have started it when I was like a kid, but yeah. mum sussed it out. Fairly. It's just simple things like that that I had never like even thought about. Then I'm like, oh, and it's not even a big deal. Like going in there, you sign some things, you get yeah. a bank account. But, you know, like I remember going in and be like, well, in my first bank account, like it's my yeah. own individual one. My mom can't see it. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, about it. yeah, like I, th- I think there were things like that, but uh, no, I, yeah, I don't know if it was as beneficial as the student loan is. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know if it's worth it. Maybe, yes, yeah. like yeah. beneficial. You know, lots of money, eh? Lots of money. <sighs> yeah, I don't know why it should be so much money, but it seems like, like a thousand more bucks a paper now at the university. Well, I think that was clear when they started sponsoring the 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 Highlanders, mm. like actively running ads, pushing their name. On yeah, the yeah, yeah, running ads and stuff. I mean, uh, and also cl- like cleaning up with Castle Street, Hyde Street, all of those kind of things. They're trying to create a really a good image, and hey, they're a business. If I owned that business, I'd probably be trying to do the same thing. Mm. But uh, it's not really how I remember. It's not the uni. point of the university, eh? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't really want to get into the university discussion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I really enjoyed university. Oh, don't get me wrong. Me too. Me too. But I don't know if it's the best decision. You know, yeah. and I don't know. I don't know if its future is very good either. I'm not very optimistic for its future. I feel like there's a revolution coming on that front, on the yeah. educational front. I think with the internet, yeah, it's got to be a factor. Online courses, S- yeah, totally. Speaking of revolutions, how? Let's get to your main man. Ooh, Mr. Musk. I'm happy to talk about yeah. that man. What do you need now to this, know? <laughs> this guy, Elon. You like my music, man. Hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> Elon Musk, uh, the super genius from uh, America. South African. South Africa? Okay, there you go. Cool. When did is he... Do you know much about him? I couldn't tell story? you his age. Mm. I think he's in the 50s. I want to say 53, but... Hey, Google. Hey, Google. How old is Elon Musk? Elon Musk is 47 years old. Okay. There you go. Um, Elon Musk, to me, is a pioneer. Mm. I, think, I think for our generation, he'll probably be... The equivalent of, like, an Einstein? You're going to give him that? A Newton? Mm. So hard to know, eh? Because history writes those things way better. I don't reckon you can class them on that same level. Mm. Like, I... Not well, you take, don't know yet. I love Elon Musk. Don't get me wrong. And I, I, as much as I want to call him the next Einstein. But maybe the people in 100 years' time will look well, at him exactly, in the same yeah, way. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I mean, at the moment, people are still unsure if he's crazy mm. or if he's smart. Like, yeah, if, yeah. He's, if he's a genius. Like, people are doing the same thing with, with Einstein. Is he an 
Is he a genius? Oh, hell yeah. Or is he just crazy? It's a hard life being a genius. Yeah. Uh, your okay. name lives forever, but it's a fucking big sacrifice. It's a massive sacrifice. But I think he is probably probably our best bet towards a sustainable future. Um, something that, you know, is actually going to change not just certain people's lives in different areas of the world, but like globally. Um, just with the work he's doing with Tesla, like uh, all his solar panels, batteries. I mean, that's, that's, that's it. Like everything eventually will be batteries, I think. Yeah, I think, well, but batteries aren't necessarily that good either, are they? But they can probably make them way better. I don't know enough about this, should I? They? They're not that good. Like they don't biodegrade at all. Mm. Like what do you do with them when you can't use them at all? It's like nuclear energy. What do you do with the waste of that? Put it at the bottom of the sea. Yeah. I don't know. Good place. Is it though? Well, well I'm more interested in the Mars venture. Can you give us a little oh, bit yeah. of a lowdown on that? Um, his goal with SpaceX. So he runs uh, Tesla, which are the cars. Um, they also do batteries. Tesla is actually, from his model, I think it's it's actually an energy company. Not really just a car manufacturer, but that's what they're focusing on at the moment. Um, and he also runs SpaceX. So he just flew um, his Falcon 9. Oh, I mean, we've, there's a few stages after that, but it's the one that lands his two boost boosters. You might have seen it. You um, can check it out on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I might try to add a link or something in the video description. So basically, he's worked out a way to make it um, by a factor of four. So I can't remember how much it was, but he was saying the his rockets cost about four million to uh, actually launch, compared just to for the launch. Yeah, just for the launch. But that's that's nothing compared to compared to what it was. I can't actually remember what the the number was. I feel like it was in the like. Will Google know? Mm. I don't know how to phrase that question. Hey, Google. Hey, Google. How much did the Saturn V cost to launch? That was what took us to the moon. According to Wikipedia, $185 million in 1969 to 1971 dollars, $1.16 billion in 2016 value, of which $110 million was for vehicle. The Saturn V was an American human-rated expendable rocket used by NASA between 1967 and 1973. Is that a billion dollars? So it cost In us today's money. Today's money, it costs us a billion dollars to get onto the moon. Now it costs four mil. About that. So, so yeah, so his, he wants to take... Yeah, that's, that's, it's, it, his main thing was that, you know, we're taking off these massive rockets and then they just shed and die in the in the ocean like they just fall off yeah and that's that these ones come back and land themselves which make it a lot more reasonable. seems way more logical <laughs> like use them again and if they're gonna cost that fucking much to make like fuck get exactly. on that shit so yeah he so he's he's worked out a way that um we can send people up into space put them into orbit um and then the boosters come back down refuel and then send more fuel back up do it about two or three times and then in theory they have enough fuel to get to marzio mars um bloody four noise mars six six month round trip so three months there three months back and uh, not including however however long you want to spend on mars yeah um but yeah he but thinks that's crazy and to yeah um his he's also I think before all of that happens, um, he's 2020, he's going to take the first people around the moon. Right. Um, that's soon, bro. Yeah, that's like two years. What do you mean by the first people? Like just two people? Um, I think Crew Dragon, if you look it up on YouTube, holds five. So, yeah, you can, t the, the capsule that will hold the people have five people. It'll be completely autonomous. Nothing will be done, run by humans. Right. Is that good? Yeah. Like He's pretty keen on that stuff, eh? On the whole AI. Um, he hates AI. Merging, 
oh, he's he's that's his. Oh, he wants fear. to merge with it. Yeah, he, that's he, to him. He's just created something called Neuralink, um, yeah. which well, he's working on it. It's basically uh, an artificial artificial intelligence. He doesn't think there's. He thinks it's inevitable that if we create it and make it good enough, it will some point in our life take over. He thinks it's too late. Yeah. It, Pretty much. Check out that documentary, Do You Trust Your Computer? Oh, yeah. That's the one. That and was epic too, eh? Good docker. I'd recommend everyone checking that out. It's great. But, yeah, so he thinks that the only way to actually handle AI is to become one with it. Mm. So he's – yeah, I don't know about that. It's <laughs> it's He's created a chip that will be embedded into your uh, cerebral cortex, um, and it basically helps with your function day to day but on steroids like yeah. on ai and ai Ooh. that shit i don't know man i feel are we too pessimistic though yes but that's that's our human nature it is it it's like it's no one ever wants to run into the the, the dark room no. You know, no one ever wants to take that first step. But that dark room might be filled with candy. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? But that's just humans. We're like, fuck, I'm not going. You go. Yeah. You know? Oh, man. Um, uh, aside from Elon Musk doing the um, the space ventures, we've also got old Jeff Bezos, eh? And he's the Amazon CEO. Richest man in the world? Richest man in the world. Hey, Google. How much money does Jeff Bezos have? The net worth of Jeff Bezos is one hundred fifty-six billion eight hundred million dollars. Billion, one hundred fifty-six billion. What's that number? Didn't we look last week and it was like a hundred billion? Oh, I can't remember. That's fucking That's crazy. Stupid. He's he's more wealthy than Bill Gates now. Yeah. Yeah. What? Anyway, back anyway. to his space plan. He's doing what is it? Blue Origin. Blue Origin. Yeah. Blue Origin. He's looking to make a business out of taking people to the moon. Eh. He's he is the AJ Hackett of space. Ah, uh, he's I, like he's that's nice. That's he's cre nice. yeah. He's created a a rocket that it's the same. Like it well, it's not the same, but it's a lot smaller. But um, because SpaceX they they first wanted to just put satellites up, and they they're taking co contracts for NASA and things like that. But Jeff Bezos, he's self usable, a self reusable rocket. Shoots you up into space. Um, and I, what's, what is it? You're in the... It's not, you're not in actual space, but you're in the outer uh, atmosphere. So there's still a tiny bit of gravitational pull. Um, shoots you up, rocket comes back and lands, and you get, I think it's like two minutes of weightlessness. So you get to float around, do your thing. And then uh, you hear a beep, whatever, something happens. You strap back in, um, and then it just basically self falls, and then cool. you should check out the YouTube video. Yeah, the, the YouTube. Well. But I've seen it, and I'm like, I would not do that. That looks really? incredible. No, you just fall from space, like, mm. and then then a parachute comes out and you land. It's I could do it, bro. <sighs> when, when's his plan to get it done by? Um, I think he's he well his. They're all kind of riding on the same. They're waiting for like um, regulations for human mm. um, space travel, like commercial human space travel. So I think when that passes, which I think was in, is in either this year, end of this year, or next year, um, but yeah, they then he'll be able to do that. It. It's crazy. Yeah. So <sighs> people are still arguing whether. The U.S. made it to the moon in 1960. <laughs> Whether it was actually... What? People are still saying the Earth's flat. Surely this is going to disprove is. that theory. Mm. The Earth's flat? I'm not sure what to say on that. Because I'm like... I don't... Conspiracy theorists, they just love yeah. it. I reckon. Look, I know the guy that I look up to, Elon Musk, he thinks the world's severe. Because mm. he's sent his rockets up there, so... I've taken his word over. Yeah, I'm, any I'm, other I'm gonna back crazies. that one first. I'll back that crazy. <laughs> it's definitely crazy. But yeah, Jeff Bezos, he's yeah, he's AJ Hackett of of space. 
But his ticket price is what he's suggesting. Under $1,000. To fly to the moon? Uh, to space. So you'll get weightlessness. You'll have like two minutes of weightlessness. Right. Um, I'm not sure. I don't, I'm not too sure like what ticket prices are for the moon and all that stuff yeah. yet. But his one, when his first, like first stage is ready, probably I think next year. Um, yeah, under a thousand bucks, you can get into space. Feel weightlessness. Still wouldn't do it. <laughs> Still wouldn't do it. Thousand US, of course. Um, yeah, that is just crazy to think that that's an option. You know, dude. If it's four million dollars a launch, well, his is a lot smaller than Elon's. So Elon's is 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 around that, but and I, it's only going to get cheaper, eh? Yeah, exactly. So I think his his is probably. Even cheaper. Do you think they'll start using this um, to travel really fast to, say, Europe as well? Oh, well, yeah. Elon's of the world. Um, the if, airline. Again, if you want to check it out on YouTube, uh, it's called the BFR. So the BFR, uh, Elon named it BFR for the big fucking rocket. That's literally <laughs> what BFR means. Um, and it's... It it'll be what it, it it'll be the main carry station for Mars travels, uh, space travel, deep space travel, everything. Right. It's bigger than anything we've ever seen before. Apparently, I haven't seen it. No one's seen it yet, but it'll be bigger than the Saturn Five, which be hard to hide. <laughs> yeah. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> but um. Yeah that that thing will be able to. He wants to have commercial flights, so you'll be able to get anywhere in the world. In 30 minutes. Right. So you might leave from New Zealand, like Auckland, have a platform out. Again, this is on YouTube. You can check it out on YouTube. Get over to London. Yeah, you can. It'll just shoot you right in space, do an arc as, like, against the rotation of the Earth, and then just land again. And yeah, it's like, actually, I think the longest That'll be flight. Sick, man. Yeah, anywhere, the longest flight from one point to the other will is 39 minutes. Right. And he also wants to do um, the underground tunnels, eh? He fucking froths a tunnel. The Boring Company. Oh, that's, yeah, that's another company he started. How many fucking hands is he playing, eh? I know. Is that taking up a whole blackjack table? I think, but if anything, that'll be the demise. Mm. Any, any, like. Can't hone in on one. Yeah. Not too being, creative. Just, just having too many pockets and just being too far gone for other and other workload people. like he's getting older it's going to get harder to handle that workload you've got to be able to monitor that well i'm sure he's got a sus though you yeah know? i'm sure he's got massive teams of people he, and stuff like that helping him. but even just just to get excited for you think back five years no one was talking about space travel after after the shuttle blew up like in mid-air when everyone was watching uh everyone was like no nah, fuck that i'm not going to space anymore Obviously, there's going to be failures, and unfortunately, there's going to be fatalities. But those people wouldn't have got in that spaceship if they weren't willing to make that sacrifice. Yeah, surely. Now, obviously, it's a, obviously if we can stop that it's from happening. It's the same as flying. Let's do that. But it's just the same as flying in a plane. Exactly. You're going to die if that plane crashes. They they do crash. Like one and two. We all know they. they <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I hate flying. Uh, Damn it! And Jeff always made me fly. Yeah, I have no emotional attachment to flying. Uh, I'd definitely be down to go to space. I'm sure that would be a lot more intense, but I'd be down to do that. Under a thousand bucks? I'll take that risk. Really? Yep. I'll I'd go risk. to the moon. I'd go to, I'd, 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 You'd go to the moon, but you would I'd do a circle space? around the moon, but I wouldn't do a free fall from... You know, like, ah. like, no, no. I'm not relying on a parachute. Mm. It's material, man. Those parachutes look mean, though. Yeah, they're probably like fire retardant and everything, but... Well, they were. Yeah, they, yeah. I don't know. Proud them. Still scares me. Yeah, no. Fair enough. Let other people do it first. Exactly. <laughs> Wait a few years, we'll come down in price. Yeah, yeah, there's another... Might be some coupons there, too. <laughs> <laughs> By then. Yep. Oh, man. Imagine if Uber was, like, space travel. Dude. Man, what if Uber was, like, the underground system, though? Well, I think that's yeah. Is that uh, he is he he will be doing that. Um, yeah. Oh, that's pretty crazy. Um, His next few years will be cool. Yeah, fuck yeah. Back to the AI thing. Um, 
He's pet Neuralink. Mm. What are your thoughts on that? I look up to him, so I've, I give I give a fair bit of trust. Yeah, but if someone wants to plant a trip in my bl- brain, I'm gonna say no. Yeah, if someone, yeah, 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 nah, I'm gonna say no to that as well. It's a no from me, especially like but I, I hate not being in control. Yeah, of the first back place. to the individuality thing. You yeah. know, I'm not keen I'm at not keen, all, bro. Like, but then again. If I, if, I'd say for me, 50 cases, 50 cases of enhanced intelligence, enhanced mobility, functionality through everything, like, in my body and in my mind, if I saw 50 cases, I'd... You'd consider it to better yourself. I'd, I'd, my chances would jump up to 90% of doing it. Right. Because if other people are, are I seeing 50 know. other people. I feel people. like the cost for that is going to be too much. The internet's already so like, Google's becoming like kind of biased. YouTube's kind of biased. Social media's biased. People yeah. are biased. They've got a political agenda. If, if they are in control of this shit, if they're what we're getting the information from, and that's, because that's what you'd be doing. It'd be like internet access for the click your brain. It's just constant. Fire of why. Yeah, constantly you can look up. Wired. We can we have hey Google in our fucking head. Yeah, true. We can just hey Ruben. <sighs> I know, I know. But but I want to be open to the option because if it is if the doomsday that everyone's been talking about is it is too late. Yeah. yeah. Or if the doomsday is the whole AI thing, then fucking A, I'm gonna do it. But I just don't see the need at the moment. Like it, 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 it. nowadays, you get onto a train and people, or, or you look around and everyone's just staring at their phone. It's crazy. Imagine man. walking there onto might be, there might be three people in a carriage that don't have their phones. That and then maybe one person that's willing to talk back. Yeah, like, yeah. And say hello. Yeah. But imagine walking onto a train and everyone's just got their eyes closed because they're just circling through Facebook. Or the internet. Surely you wouldn't need to close your eyes. But I mean, think about um, that Black Mirror episode we are watching the other night. Oh, yeah. One of the social media rating system. That had an eye implant as well, didn't it? Yeah. She had, yeah. yeah. But they, I mean, that that's active now. They've they've got chips, like, like uh, hot chips, what are they called? That is like a currency system. So it's like a credit card. Right. And then you just embed it. it in yourself. Yeah, yeah. So you can. Can't lose that shit. No one else can steal your money. <laughs> But you can't be lost either. Yeah. You are constantly on the grid. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Not that if you're trying to hide, I'm sure. I just want Well, who else can choice. find it? Who's got, the, who's got access to that information? You know? You don't want every single person knowing you are at all times. Fuck that. But if you're good with a computer, like really good with a computer, then... Well, you, you could probably find anything. Everyone really good with a computer once they have the computer inside of them. Mm. Yeah. Imagine How do you that, control the hackers? The computer just becomes your psyche. It just becomes your consciousness. That's fucked up. Because it's pretty, it's pretty interesting thinking about, because that would be science taking over the soul. That's what I would see it as. That's science finally jumping over the soul. Because back in the day, before science, everyone believed in the soul, and they had soul-based metaphysic, metaphysics. They based their life around, you know? And then science came in, and then that fucking changed the whole game. Mm. Like I'm reading that book there at the moment, that Carl Jung book, Man in Search, Modern Man in Search. Modern Man in Search of Soul. It's fucking good. You should check it out. He's really good. It's from, like, 1933. Um, he pretty much was just talking about that. Eh? I'm, I'm going to contest that. Yeah, well, let me, let, me, let me quickly say this quote. I wrote this quote down there. Uh, I need to be able to read my while. Okay, so this is this is the way that um it's kind of changing. Like the psyche won't build your body, but it will be everyone sees it as matter matter that builds your psyche now. It isn't physical matter. So he's saying biochemical reactions, you know? It's the oh, matter okay. making chemical reactions that make your psyche. It's not the psyche that builds your body. It's the matter 
that builds your psyche through chemical reactions. What cr- what what's the cause of a chemical reaction? Excitement, uh, like ex- so. If you get excited, chemicals are released. Yeah, dopamine. Exactly. Exactly. See, I reckon you I I reckon mm. that's an underestimation of your soul, because not to draw everything back to music, but let's go back to music. Like if I am singing a song, if I'm jamming the song, if I'm fully in it, sometimes it feels like, and this is going to sound really holistic, but sometimes it feels like I'm not actually in the moment. It's more like, like a third person I, like I'm just doing things. I don't even, I'm not even thinking about it, just jamming, singing along, but you get stuck in it. Yeah. I think that's your soul. So like a loss of control when you're fully passionate in yeah, in your passion, like within your soul, I, I think it's more powerful than we even realize. Yeah, I, I just don't know if I like the terminology of soul. I've totally, I totally experienced that as well. You know, it's fucking, it's weird. It's, it's really weird. Really feeling. Really weird to like explain because it sounds so bullshit. But, <laughs> so, but maybe that's just, maybe that's just what doing your passion is, and you have like this a sense of alignment with reality. You know, the yin and yang shit. You're standing on the order between chaos and order, and that's what feels really good. Because you're kind of dabbling in both these oh, areas. Or you could think about it as like the melding of unconsciousness and consciousness states. So your consciousness in an unconscious state, kind of. Yeah. I, well, see, that's we, we, we still don't know what the hell's going on there. Hypnosis. Look at hypnosis. People are like, nah, it's bullshit. And people are like, nah, it really works. Watch yeah. this guy do a chicken dance in front of 800 people. Yeah. It, I mean, people like... stop smoking from it. Forever. My dad stopped smoking from it. Mm. He went to one session and... Did his hypnosis thing came out? Never wanted to school games. It's yeah. got to be. It's got to be psychological games. But it never, it never worked for my mum. She went, did the same thing. Smoked for years after that. Yeah. Um, and the only way that she could get off it was chemical reactions. Yeah. Um, so she went on. But it's just everyone has a different uh, remedy. Yeah. So I, I, I just think yeah, I, 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 I think we're estimating on something that we don't even understand anyway. No. So it's like yeah, we we I'm. Um, we're always going to make estimations now, but I think it's probably still ill-informed. Mm. But well, you're talking about the neuro, neuro link? Oh, or? the, uh, in the oh, relation the, between the quote. Yeah, okay, the okay, quote. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But I suppose, yeah, with, I suppose with AI too. I just could, like, I just like that point of view. Like that's, that's an interesting way to conceptualize those ideas. The, the, the denigration of the idea of the soul and religion as well, and like the rise of science, and maybe like the Neuralink it's definitely science the best would be, way to the, think of it so it would far, be right. the takeover of science, kind of like yeah. science is one now. Because I feel like well, that soul element would be lost that you're talking about with music. I think those moments could be lost yeah. if you have these chips planted in you. Yeah, exactly. Like, right. how do we know how much it controls? So, like, if it is li- literally Even controlling it be the same as well. Yeah, that's that's the problem. That's the problem. You you, you won't find unique people. Like sometimes. You meet people that you're like, I don't like this person, but it's probably a good thing because you're not meant to like everyone. You're not meant to dislike everyone, mm. you know? So it's, but what happens when we're all so platonic that no one hates each other? No one loves each other. Everyone's just there existing. Yeah. I, I don't know. Is that getting too far gone? Like it's complete like group ideology, ideology, I'd say, because we'd all be one group, right? Mm. one species one united but that's what we're trying one. to do that's like what humans are trying to do i know now. Like, i know but i think people forget the element of individuality that makes society worth living in yeah you know people are different and that's what makes life fun <laughs> i yeah. think that's what also enables creativity yeah well creativity is probably i think it enables love like true love like that one-on-one love that bond those strong bonds because if everyone was the same then Everyone would love everyone equally. Yeah. Everyone would be on the same wavelength, I yeah. suppose. Mm. It would probably be fine to be in it if you're, one, if you're in it, you know? But, but then but again, I don't know if I like what you're losing. I don't know if I like the sacrifice. Not to counter counteract, but I'm going to. It, it, what about the positives? Like... Yeah, the positives are still there. Well, you've got I, I, limited, I, unlimited source of information. You know everything. And I don't, and if, if, if everyone is just existing, there's no turmoil. So the, if there's no turmoil, there's no war. Mm-hmm. If there's no war, when we boil it down, hopefully 
our economy is a fucking rock solid, like everywhere. No yeah. one's in debt, which. What was that thing you were looking at the other day? That were how how much trillion in debt? Like, uh, well, yeah. the the counter. Yeah, the second counter of how much the debt of the U.S. government's going up. It's crazy. <sighs> yeah. yeah, so much money. But anyway, carry on. Yeah, the, uh, everything would be sorted. Exactly. Everything would be fixed, and I think that's why people look at it like that. But I'm like, yep. But what are you losing? You know, what are you losing if you fix it like that? If that's the way you go to fix it. And I don't know if it's worth the losses. Yeah. I think there will be definite benefits that we're going to be like, that's ridiculous. That's so cool. Let's sign me up. But then I think, like anything, like smoking, exactly like smoking, when people first started smoking, they thought it got rid of cancer. Fucking 20... Your doctor doctor chooses camel. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, exactly. 20 years later, we're like, oh, shit, it causes it. Damn it. Sorry. Yeah, we fucked up a lot of people Sorry. and we predisposed a lot of people to like that as well. We, 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 the correlation between parents and kids smoking is really high. So it's like not every kid who had a parent who smoked will smoke, but most people who start smoking, one of their parents was a smoker. Do you reckon that's, <laughs> that's from if, if your parents, if you see your parents smoking you you kind of see it as like, well, they do, so it can't be that bad. I think there's an element of that for sure. Acceptance. I think there's also like the biology behind it, the chemicals. Really? The addiction. Yeah. Secondhand smoking. I think you could get addicted to the nicotine. Crave it. Do you think that boils down to personality? Addictive personalities? Or is that... Does addiction boil down to personality? Because my mom was a smoker. I think some people are more susceptible to addiction. Yeah. I, I, I believe in an addictive personality. I think there will be certain personality traits that probably um, have a higher correlate, correlation with addiction than other personality traits. Mm. I'd say that's probably a fair guess, too. Yeah. But, wow. Well, it's, I mean, we've got friends that are easily More sidetracked tempted. or tempted or or just a, that can get addi- tendencies yeah, yeah. than others. Those others are a lot more conservative in general, though. Yeah. So they're a lo- like I've I've noticed they're a lot less open than said people before that uh, semi like addiction. You know, to a point that, that they don't mind losing that sort of. Con- Yeah. Everyone's different. <laughs> no. What was there, eh? On that note, let's see how let's say see how you scale up on my high virtue test, eh? Let's do it. Just let me get it up. Do you know what's going on here? Uh no. Have you seen this happen at all? No. Um, you do it. So basically there's a set of ten questions. And it's called the high virtue test. And it's like two extremes. And you've got to pick which extreme you think you lean close, considering both which way you think you lean to more, more towards and what you think is better. Keeping in mind that like your actions in the world normally represent your beliefs. So, so I choose basically which one I believe in most. Yeah. Which way I'd lean. Yeah, which way. Suppose, yeah. Still struggling to like explain that test properly. Eh? It makes more sense when I do it. You ready? Yeah. Okay. I changed one of the questions from last time. Okay. So this one is OCD, OCD, and thank you, Peter Nike. OCD and hoarding or hoarding. OCD. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You've noticed that. Comfort or adventure? Ooh. Um. Probably adventure. Yeah. Compassion or competition? This probably depends on how much I care about that one thing, but I'd probably say competition. I'd competitive nature. Yeah. yeah. Harmony or honesty? Honesty. Group discussion or one on one discussion? Oh, 
Um, probably group. <sighs> yeah. Purpose or pleasure? Purpose. Happy and sad or content? Happy and sad. Question or answer? Uh, I'm going to go with answer. Power to the individual or power to the group? Individual. And final one, yes or no? Yes. Cool, awesome. Thanks, Brogan. Thank you very That's much. That's good timing. Your missus just got home. <laughs> so she's going to go nuts. Uh, yep, that was episode 15 slash the first episode of this new series. Thanks for tuning in. Um... I'm looking to do these probably monthly at this point just to maintain workload and give you one monthly. So just keep watching the space and yeah, thanks. Any final words from you, Brogan? Thank you very much for having me. Uh, there he goes, yes, there he goes. And we can leave it at that. Catch you later. <laughs>